hot glue gun back on Jensen's range. Uh, for this section, I'm going to be demonstrating mortars and how to use them, how to range them. So, first I'm going to engage these uh, infantry targets here that are at 400 meters. How to range them, we can, if we're lucky enough to have a kit uh, that has binoculars, we can take those out, use our horizontal line here under the slope with the 1.7, that tells me the uh, average height of the infantry is 1.7 meters. So I'm just gonna put that horizontal line at their feet and it looks like the four is the closest hash mark to their heads. So that tells me they're approximately 400 meters out. Again, we can kind of do this similarly with vehicles, but the vehicles are taller, so you're not going to be able to get quite as accurate a range uh, just using binoculars. But for our purposes, this will do just fine. And I also know it's at 400 meters because there's a lovely sign there. So I'm going to go ahead and place down an attack marker to get my bearing. And we can go ahead and start launching some mortars at it. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to hop in the mortar. And we go to our dial. This is not important that you can see anything here. It does not matter that I'm looking at sandbags. It won't affect anything. So the mortar ranging is a little bit counterintuitive. The higher up you dial it, the closer to you the mortars will fall. So as you can see, the range card there on the left, if we want to go to 50 meters, which is pretty close, you have to dial all the way up on the mortars. But I know that my target is 400 meters away, and from the range card, I can see that I need to dial to 1431. Now, there are a few things that are going to make a difference. Uh, elevation and direction that you're shooting can make a difference in how high or low you need to be beyond your point. But uh, we're going to start with just right on 400, which is 1431. So you can see on the left-hand side here, I've got my dial right on 1431. And then my compass at the bottom, I am pointing uh, 189 degrees directly towards my attack mark that I put down. So I'm going to go ahead and launch three, and we'll take a look and see what happens. We'll see how close I get. Alrighty. Take a, take a watch. Take a look-see here. Seconds, usually. Here they come. So you can see as they're falling, they're not falling directly on my attack marker. They are spread out a little bit, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're firing mortars. Now what I want to do is be able to take out these infantry here with my mortars, because your your mortars really aren't going to be effective on any vehicles, save maybe a Lodgy or a Technical that's not armored. But uh, mainly we're going to want to use them for suppression to soften points and uh, take out infantry. Mortars can also be used, they'll, they'll knock out sandbags and stuff like that that's uh, light fortification. So I'm going to go ahead and relocate my attack marker. And all I'm doing here is just pressing uh, the Tango key T to open up my radial menu. And then we have some nice um, markers that can be quickly placed accurately with that menu. So now you can see that I was shooting at uh, 189. I've shifted a degree over, which should be enough to hit our infantry markers out there. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look. And you can see with the first hit, we definitely got a good strike. All three targets did go down. So that's a quick, uh, just a quick le little lesson on, on mortars there. There are different uh, mortars depending on what faction you use, but they're all the same as far as uh, ranging and, and operating them. They all have HE and they all have smoke rounds. So really quickly, I will demonstrate some smoke rounds because they are probably the most effective rather than HE. Uh, believe it or not, you're gonna get more use out of the smoke. So again, uh, we're shooting 400 meters, 188, just off to the south. And that, I need, that means I need to dial up to 1431. All right, so we have dialed up. I'm going to send three smokes, and we'll take a look. Smokes are great for 
you know, covering your position, covering up vehicles, advancing on positions. They're just, they're great all around. They're so useful and they are underutilized. HE doesn't win games, but I believe that smoke can. Okay, there we go. The first ones are popping off. So they'll pop, start small, and then they'll get pretty big. So you can see, I mean, really with just those mortars, those three, we've obscured quite a large area. So if we were advancing on a point or something like that, it can really, it can really blind your enemy. They don't last super long, but uh, they are pretty effective. I'll do, I'll do one more, <clears throat> one more demonstration here, and we'll pull it in just a little bit closer for, for uh, the sake of being able to see them better. And I'm just going to do uh, basically some peppering. So I'm just going to pepper the area with mortars. So I've got my uh, my attack mark out, 100 meters. So I need to dial up to 1558 according to my range card. This can take a while sometimes. All right, 1550. Here we are, 1558. And what I like to do uh, when I'm peppering an area, depending on how large it is, I like to go up and down about... Uh, 10 clicks. So I'll shoot between 1558, 1548, and then I'll go up to 1568 just to just to spread them out. And you can move a couple degrees left and right, and that will really give you a nice spread and uh, enable you to hit, you know, a, a large area. It's good for advancing on a point, trying to soften up a base or something like that. So we're starting on 1558. I'll send three. I'm going to reload. Send three more at 1568. And I'll send three more at 1548. These are all going to land really nice, I think. And I, I haven't moved left or right any degrees, but uh, here's my first three. Landing pretty good. These are the ones I pulled a little bit closer. And we'll have our next ones a little bit further away. So pretty good. Not too bad. Alright, that wraps up the mortar portion. The next thing we're going to move on to is rockets and grenades. Alrighty, I have changed my role to the lat or light anti-tank i've picked up the rpg 26 which is one of the two options you'll have for lat kits on the russian faction and i'm just going to do a quick demonstration so this lat kit has one frag grenade and one heat round so in order to operate this tube launcher what we're going to do is aim down sight and then you can actually adjust your um your base range and you do that by holding press and hold x x-ray and then use your scroll wheel to scroll anywhere from 50 to 250 meters. So we're going to go ahead and dial it on 100 because that's about where we are. And aim center mass and take the shot. Nailed it. Definitely would have taken out a tire there. All right. So that's pretty much the down and dirty of the uh, RPG-26, this tube. You only have the one heat round, so that's pretty short and sweet. The other kit has uh, two different rounds. We have a heat round as well as a different aiming device. We have a different optic for this one. And then we have frag rounds as well. So I want to demonstrate uh, the fact that frag rounds will not do very much, uh, if anything at all, to a vehicle. So really, you do not want to waste frag rounds on any vehicles because you're not going to damage it. So here, we'll uh, use our optic. And how you aim with this one, so the top large plus is my 50 meter mark. The next one under that, the smaller plus, is my 100, and then you see the 2, 3, 4, 5. Of course, those are 200 through 500 meters. So we'll go ahead and place our frag round on the vehicle at 100 meters and take a shot. So as you can see, we hit it, but the, uh, the difference between explosions between the frag round and the heat round is, uh, is quite noticeable. So that one, you just get kind of a... Uh, Kind of a white puff of smoke. We'll do the, uh, we'll shoot another heat round at it just to demonstrate again. Much larger explosion, black smoke, and uh, sparks flying everywhere. So that's a quick way to uh, tell tell the difference between those couple rounds. Another thing that's very important about RPGs is arming distance. So I will demonstrate. Uh, 
messing up the arming distance here and shooting a target that is too close. So if you shoot something that's too close, you're going to get an effect like this. Nothing happens. Happens with every, uh, every kind of round you'll use. Heat rounds, frag rounds, tandems, doesn't matter. If you shoot a target that's too close, you will not arm the rocket. See? So that was the RPG-7. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch my specialist role. I'm going to switch to my uh, heavy anti-tank or hat kit. So I've grabbed my hat kit, and I want to demonstrate how to properly fire a tandem round out of the uh, Russian RPG-7. So, if you'll remember uh, from just a few moments ago, I was discussing ranging with this uh, optic that we have here. The top plus is 50 meters. Next plus down is 100, 200, 300, and so on and so forth. Now, the tandem round, you must keep in mind, is a lot heavier than a heat round or a frag round. So if I range to the 100 meters where I know this vehicle is at, I put it on the small plus, and I'm ready to fire my heavy tandem round, watch how much short this drops. So firing on that 100 meter mark drops me about 50 meters short of where I need to be at least. So I'm going to go ahead and rearm and demonstrate how to properly fire the tandem from the RPG-7. Alright, I've got my fat tandem rocket loaded back up in here. And we will dial up to the next grid. So you'll see the large plus, the small plus, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then underneath that we have a horizontal line with a 1 in the center. That one is the 100 meter mark for the tandem round. So what you're going to want to do is aim all the way up there until your one is center mass, your bottom one, and go ahead and take a shot. That was much better. Range with the RPG-7, I'm going to utilize my slope on the right hand side, similarly to how you would range infantry with binoculars. You can see the uh, 246810, the slope, and then the 2.7. That tells me the average vehicle height, uh, 2.7 meters. And how I'm going to use this is the same way. I'm going to place my uh, horizontal line here on the bottom of the vehicle. And then we can see the 4. I'm, I'm ranging the target at 400 meters. We can see the 4 is right about on top of uh, that vehicle. And we'll see if we can take a shot and maybe hit it. It's kind of a long shot, but we'll go ahead and try. Looks like we nailed it. 400 meter rocket shot. Not bad. Alright, I'm going to pop over to the other faction here and demonstrate those rockets once again. Alrighty, so I've switched to the US faction in order to demonstrate their light anti-tank and heavy anti-tank kits. So. Uh, this this uh, tube launcher operates the same as the Russian tube, except we can dial this one all the way from 100 to 500 meters. So you have a lot, a uh, lot bigger range option on there. So I'm going to go ahead and dial it in at 200 meters. I'm going to crouch to stabilize and take my shot with my heat round on the 200 meter target. Looks like we nailed it. Good stuff. With this uh, first lat kit. For the U.S., we have one high-explosive anti-tank, and we'll switch to the other just to demonstrate that tube as well. This is the law. So this one's going to be a little bit different, but once again, we can range this from 100 to 400. So we'll go ahead and drop her on two. Zoom in, stabilize, and take our shot. Looks like that one might have landed a little bit short, but that's okay. So those are just a quick rundown of how to range, uh, how to adjust the range with the US lat kits, and I will take a hat kit and demonstrate these once again. We have the Maws, uh, we'll fire a tandem rocket. The nice thing about the uh, the US hat is your, uh, your optic will change based on your uh, type of munition that you load in there. So once when I load the tandem, my, my scope in here is going to be uh, accurate, unlike the RPG-7 where we have to actually use that lower uh, level of 
that lower tier of ranging numbers. So I'm going to go ahead. It's on 200. Go ahead and take my shot. Looks like we nailed it. Good stuff. And we'll switch to a heat round just to demonstrate the difference in between the optics there. So the first one I fired was my heavy tandem. You can see this one, uh, my, my optic is a lot smaller. It's more difficult to read. But again, I'm going to dial it up to the two, take my shot, and we've nailed it. So that's the first U.S. hat kit. We'll change to, oh, wrong thing there. We'll change to the next hat kit just to demonstrate. So both the, uh, the U.S. hat kits are the same with the exception of nothing besides the scope. So both the U.S. hat kits are the same with the exception of the red dot sight. You will have the uh, M68 on, uh, on one hat kit and the other one you'll just be running iron sights. So that wraps up hat and lat for U.S. and Russian. I uh, hope you learned something on how to properly range vehicles with the Russian RPG-7 and how to properly dial up your sights by holding X and using your scroll wheel to adjust your baseline. Next thing we're going to get into is grenades. So I'm back here on the range and I have my Russian grenadier kit and I just want to demonstrate a few ways that you can utilize this. It's important to be aware that this, as well as the light anti-tank and heavy anti-tank, do have a minimum arming distance. So if you shoot something too close, you're simply going to get that little ricochet and no explosion. Again, make sure you're shooting far enough out so that the munition can properly arm. So uh, there are several different types of grenadier um, kits in the game. I'm going to demonstrate the Russian and U.S. for right now. Uh, the Russian kit is pretty simple. It's pretty nice. I think it's one of the best in the game. Um, basically, we're going to make sure we have our grenade loaded. And this, our ranging can be changed by pressing X, holding, and then dialing up or down with our scroll wheel. So, let's go ahead and take a few practice shots at the vehicle out there. So, I'm dialed in to 100. I've got my grenade loaded, and I'll go ahead and shoot. So you can see we got a hit at 100 meters. Take another shot. And it's important to note that this will stay on whatever setting you scroll it to. So uh, just be aware of that when you're engaging targets that might be closer or further away. Uh, one, one interesting thing that the Russian kit has is the ability to shoot up to 400, 500 meters rather. And then you can do 200 meter high or 300 meter high. So this is basically like lobbing grenades over a wall, essentially. So I'm going to do some 200 meter highs and see if we can't hit that 200 meter target out there. These can take quite a while to uh, come back down and land. So I'll shoot three. And don't be surprised if there's a weird cut in the video here. All right, there's three out. And let's take a look. Oh, there's the first one right on target. The next, and the final one should be coming down here shortly. There it is. Not bad. So that's just a quick little uh, demonstration of how to use the Russian Grenadier kit. Again, just keep in mind that you do have an arming distance, and don't try to shoot things that are too close. Do not shoot your frag grenades at armored vehicles, because you will do no damage to them. All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the U.S. Grenadier. All right, I'm back on the range here with my U.S. Grenadier kit. So this one is quite different from the Russian Grenadier in that our uh, ranging only goes up to 250, and it operates a little bit differently. But uh, your baseline is going to be your 1. That's my, uh, you can see the 1 on either side of my sight there. Place that at the base of my target, and go ahead and fire, and we got a hit. So that's how you're going to shoot something just simply at 100 meters. Anything further out than that, you're going to use your scroll wheel to scroll up. And we got the 200 meter. Go ahead and take my shot. And you can see 
that we got that grenade about 200 meters out there. So that's just a quick little demonstration of the US Grenadier kit. I'm going to switch to a kit with some frag grenades now. Okay, I've switched to the squad leader kit and I'm back over here on the grenade range. So this is pretty simple. This is a great place to practice tossing your grenades. You can do underhand throws with your right hand click and overhand throws with your left hand click. Just like that. Oops. And we have this nice uh, window mock-up here that is great to practice throwing grenades into windows. So how I like to aim is I like to put my thumb right about where I want the grenade to go. So I want to throw it right about in the middle of that window, put my thumb there, throw it in. Again, we'll rearm, move up to the next one, I'm put my thumb up at the top, that's where I want my grenade to go, go ahead and toss right in the window. And we'll do one more. Very high one. I want my grenade to go there, so I place my thumb where I want my grenade to go. Go ahead, give it a toss, and it's over. It's as easy as that. Alright, so in this video we covered rockets, mortars, and grenades. Keep in mind that grenade launchers and rockets do have a minimum range to arm. Left click to throw overhand, right click to throw underhand grenades, and in order to guide them where you want them to be, your thumb is pretty much the best way you can, uh, you can aim. Works pretty well.